has a program where they will be able to help you and you believe, listen, I want you to, that if I have this person in my corner, if I have this person in my corner and I have their help, whatever that help is, they can help me get that thing I want within, I don't know, six months. And let's just say a six month time frame is brilliant for you. If six months is not the sort of time frame that would be brilliant, if it's two months, then let's make it two months. But within this time frame, having them in my corner, um, with them helping me, I can achieve that thing that I really desire, which at the moment seems quite improbable. But having them in my corner, having their help, I can see myself actually achieving that. And I'm fully persuaded that having them in my corner would actually help me to achieve that big thing, whatever that big thing is. Now, if that is the case, question, um, I, I don't know, I want how much would you be willing to pay them if you were 100% certain that having them in, their cor in your corner means that thing is going to happen? All right. So how much would you be willing to borrow to invest in having them in your corner so that by the time that time you, you hit that time frame, you would have achieved that objective? All right. So attach a financial value to it. So if I could borrow this much and I could achieve this goal, I will borrow it. All right. Now, whatever number you have come up with. All right. So. So Keith, how much did you come up with? I don't. I, you don't need to tell me what the situation is or whatever. But what, how much did you come up with? The I would borrow this much if I knew for certain, believed for certain that with their help I would achieve this. How much did you come up with? Uh, five thousand pounds. Okay, five thousand pounds. What that means basically is, if a person masters non-selling buyer conversations, right, and they have these conversations with you and you believe this person could help you, they don't need to sell to you for you to invest £5,000 with them. They don't. They literally don't. So what do they need to do? They just need to help you believe. They don't need to try to convince you. They just need to help you to believe because if you believe, you will buy. If you don't believe, you will have doubts. That what a lot of people try to do is we try to convince people rather than helping them to buy. So the key is you help people to buy. How do you help them to buy? You help them to have enough experiences and engage with them where they believe. It's just like asking a person out. If a person believes that being go again, going into a relationship with you will help them, you will, will give them the experiences they desire, they would. If they have doubts, they will hesitate. It's just the way we are. If they have doubts, they would hesitate. If they believe, they would say yes. So the secret here is not trying to convince. It's to basically help them to believe. And that's what non-selling buyer conversation is all about is don't try to convince them. Help them. Help them to believe. And, and that's really, I mean, yes, there is, a, there is a process to it, but that's the idea behind it. The idea is, I mean, with me, and, and I know my, my, my conversion rates are ridiculously high, um, I don't like selling. Um, my story, and I'll just briefly share this, I'm going to make it because I know, you know, as brief as possible. Um, I, I got involved in a particular business in the direct sales industry, and I realized I was really rubbish. Um, I spoke to everybody, and most of them, pretty much everybody said no. Um, oh, that was really interesting, DJ, but nobody would agree to buy what I was promoting. And so I went in to learn, and I invested in sales training. I got all the books. I attended the workshops and things like that. And I got quite good at it, but I hated it. I didn't enjoy it. I, I knew, and I got really into it. And I, I my conversions improved. Um, so I moved from maybe getting, you know, one out of 20 people buying from me, to getting to the point where I was getting, you know, three out of 10, four out of 10 buying. I got quite good from conversations, <coughs> but I actually didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy these conversations. I didn't enjoy 
you know, trying to convince people to buy. I jokingly say the first three letters of convince is con. You know, I didn't enjoy, you know, it was just not me. I I didn't enjoy the whole process of dealing with one objection after another when a person says this is not for them, trying to convince them that it was for them. And, you know, all the tactics that are, you know, that you learn in sales training. And I didn't like it. So I had to just step back. And I just, just I, I literally, you know, through came I looked at me and my personality and looked at how I like to engage with people. And then I literally developed this idea of not selling and just using conversations and moving people along, helping them believe. And my conversion rates are ridiculously high now. Uh, my conversion rates are 95%. And I need you to really get that. That means for every 20 people that I talk to, 19 of them will buy based on my recommendation, yet I don't sell. In fact, when I coach and train people, I say to them, the moment you start selling, your conversion will start going down. I don't sell. But what I do is I have a conversation with people. We get to the point where they want to buy from me. And when they want to buy from me, it's just a case of helping them, helping them make the right choice. So I don't handle objections because I don't get objections. That's the key thing. I don't get objections because there's only objections if people are resistant. They're not resistant. They're more keen than I am for us to move forward. And that's the secret. Wow. 95% conversion rate. That is, yes. that is fan. I mean, any, anybody who is uh, involved in sales at this point will be picking themselves up off the floor at this point. Like, wow. 95%. Anyone who's not in, uh, in sales, um, just to let you know, um, I mean, 95 is an, a phenomenal rate typical typical rates depending upon industry and so on but for, for coaches and this sort of thing typical rates that i tend to hear are, are what around 20 percent is is often considered a good rate yeah. uh yeah. so 95 percent conversion rate using non-selling by a con conversion conversations conversations i got got there in the end <laughs> um, <laughs> because you're you're not selling you're making it easy for them to want to buy from you rather than you selling to them yeah wow see the way i like the way i'd like to sorry i apologize for butting in actually <laughs> you know, she would just finish. Go, ahead, go ahead yeah no it's okay go go for it go for it yeah see um the way i like to imagine you go now imagine you go and see a doctor right now when you go and see a doctor you go in there to see your doctor and this is just to help us understand the whole concept of non-selling buyer conversation um you go in and you sit down and you basically and this is the this is the idea behind um behind a book that i wrote that that will you know call discovery call magic um so the, the when you go and see a doctor you you go in you don't go in to buy stuff you go in because you have a problem and you hope they can help you fix it that's it you don't go in saying, I want to buy medicine. I want so they're not interested in medicine. They're not interested in any procedures. You know, all they're interested in is fixing their problem. And so they come to you because they're thinking you might, Mr. or Miss Doctor, might be able to help me. And so they go in. And when they go in, it's a conversation. So, okay, so, yeah, so what's up? What brings you here today? And then the person goes into, well, it's my belly, and it's just at night. I get this funny pain at the right side, and it starts, you know, and it can be very painful. And when I lie on my side, it really feels like, you know, I've got this, you know, it's, it's this big, massive object sitting on my belly, and it hurts. And when I try to breathe, you know, um, it, it gets even more painful, especially when I breathe out. And when I sit up, you know, I then feel this pain at my upper spine and <clears throat> they're just explaining the scenario and the situation. The doctor's asking a few more questions to really understand, you know, and that's going on for a while, you know. So the doctor's asking a lot of questions to understand, you know, what their pain is and the impact it's having on them. So the doctor then asks them, what have you tried? And did that make any difference? Did it make things better? Did it make things worse? You know, and the doctor's asking all these questions to really get to understand, you know, what, you know, where they are, what the situation is. Sometimes a doctor might actually say, well, let me just touch you here, you know, when they examine them a little bit you know initially right and that's just the first few things they do the doctor then says okay let me ask you a question um 
when you do you do, does this thing wake you up about three o'clock in the morning and the person says wow it does how do you know and says and when it and, and all of that you know so these are the things that tend to the questions the doctor's asking the person thinking wow this doctor's really smart how did he know this thing wakes me up about three o'clock in the morning what that individual doesn't know is that the doctor's probably spoken to about 15 other people with the exact same situation that same day but to this individual in their own unique situation right to them it is <clears throat> they don't care about anybody else. They just care about themselves and their situation. And as far as they're concerned, they are wowed that this doctor really understands what they're going through. They've been talking to their friends and the friends have just been ooming and ahhing, but this person's different. They actually understand, right? That's the first thing. Now, we then move forward and then the doctor says, okay, you know, um, have you been asked a few more questions? Have you been doing this? Have you been doing that? Say, so, yes, I have. And, and when you do this, does this happen? Yes, it does. Mm, okay, I can see how that's be impacting. They're thinking, wow. So that's probably why I've been feeling this way. That's probably why this is happening. These are the thoughts going through this person. I'm thinking, wow, this doctor's really, really good. They actually understand me and they understand what I'm going through and they understand why I'm going through all this, right? And this is, you know, so I'm just painting the scenario. And then what then happens moving forward is the doctor then says something along the lines of, okay, you know what? Let me explain what's going on here. This is what's happening. This is what's going on. This is why you feel this way way and if you can if you don't do anything about this it's gonna get worse and within a few weeks it could be like this so you've got to definitely do something about it right you've got to fix the situation and the person says yeah I, you know what i don't want that to happen to me and i do agree we need to fix this but how do we fix this what do we do what can i do doctor i really want to know what to do doctor says okay well um really there's two options Option number one is we can do this, 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 this. And if you do it this way, um, you, you you will get relief quicker, right? But you, you would have this side effect. Or we could do it this other way. It takes a little longer, but actually you tend to heal, you know, you know, whatever it is, and you don't have this other side effect we talk about, right? So these are the two options. Both of them work, but, you know, the, how it's going to pan out. <coughs> you just triggered me there, Keith, right? And then when, when when they then say that, doctor then says, so having explained these two approaches, which one of them would you prefer we use? <coughs> Excuse me. So the doctor explains the scenario to the individual. Person says, well, doctor, I, you know what? I understand that side effect. I can live with that, but I can't live with this pain. Can we go with approach number one? Okay. So the, the individual kind of, there's there's no objections to, oh, I'm not really sure. I don't really. Why? Because at this point, they believe. They believe this doctor, because of this experience they've had, can help them towards their aspired state of being in a being healthy. And so there's no objection. There's no resistance. So the doctor then says, OK, so how would you want me to help you? Well, doctor, I don't know. You tell me. You know, you're the expert here. You just tell me what we need to do and let's do it. The doctor doesn't need to do any selling. The doctor doesn't need to be any, do any convincing. The person's already excited about, you know, then we might talk about price. Then, now, obviously, here in the UK, we've got, well, depends on if you go private, but you get the whole idea. Within the context of business, it's, okay, so that's all we need to do. And let's just talk, get the money out of the way, right? So we can actually work towards helping you get what you want. And that pretty much sums up, you know, this is me trying to really simplify that conversation that you have. It's a non-pressure conversation. We're not, we're helping them to make a buying decision, the right buying decision for themselves. And what it's all about is you, through that conversation, you help build their belief where they believe that with your help, they can get what they want and they want your help to help them get what they want. So you don't have to persuade or convince. And this is, you know, and I've used this approach at a job interview where I turn things around and it turned from being a job interview to a consultation where they were literally, so it was them asking my advice and how to actually make something work within their organization. I turned it around. Wow. You know, so you can use it in any sort of scenario, really, all sorts of different scenarios. Wow. That, uh, did did you get the job? <laughs> well, funny enough, um, they actually offered me something completely different. I, I worked with them as a consultant for a few months. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. which I, I suspect was probably even better than uh, than the actual job itself. 
Yes, it was, because I really didn't want that job. I was at a point, I was at a stage of my business where I needed the cash flow. And, you know, my business was very, was struggling. This was sometime um, 2000, uh, early 2012. And I was just struggling. And so I reluctantly went for that job interview. And I just, it, I turned things around and it became a consultation. It, there was two of them. 